Music has been part of London's history for decades and it contributes 4.4 billion to the UK economy each year. But there's been a marked decline in music education in our schools. So, how does a young musician get a foothold in the industry? We need to make sure that the schools have the resources and understand the value and the importance of music education. Music can be a beacon to all of us, no matter what our backgrounds. That's how I was able to deal with stuff in my life, it was to go to music and kind of let my feelings out there. This week, I'm meeting the next generation of musicians. We find out how music can help with our mental health. Being able to go and make music helps to re-establish those, those connections. And we get special access to the latest equipment from one of the UK's leading keyboard and digital piano providers. And finally, we put our musicians in the spotlight at a world-famous recording studio. But will they impress our industry guests? all on this episode of Hot Topics. In this series, we look at hidden stories that have a big impact in the UK. And we meet real life heroes who have first-hand experience. We'll be looking at questions like, how can one simple medical procedure save millions of lives? How does one building in London impact new inventions right across the world? Can we inspire a new generation of musicians? And just how far can we push our social care system before it collapses in the UK? Join me to find out more on the UK's biggest hot topic. Music is a massive part of our lives and a unique way of expressing ourselves. It can bring families together, help children develop from a very young age, and it can have a huge impact on our mental health and well-being. I've come to the beating heart of music in London to meet a true London-born artist at the Casio Demo area in Denmark Street. Jodie Abacus arrived on the scene in 2013. Since then, he's released a series of well-received singles, leading to a debut album with flavours of R&B, soul and funk. Luckily for me, he's agreed to meet up to hopefully be part of our panel of mentors. I started playing and experimenting in college. Then after my mum and dad divorced, something kicked in and was like, this is what I want to do. That trauma kind of brought me to actually realising that I could write songs. Where's my rainbow? Where's my sun in the sky? I came up with this song called I'll Be That Friend. Mm -hmm. And it's basically, if I knew someone felt the way that I did, I would give them a hug. I was in a really low place and I needed that hug. I believe that music is therapy. It was my own medicine that helped me to get where I am today. We're doing a little experiment, which is with uh, three people to mentor and hopefully get on the get on the ladder. Um, would you be one of our mentors? Of course, I would. Well, now that we've got our first mentor on board, we're going to find our musicians. And to do that, we're looking at grassroots organisations where music is more than just a hobby. It's part of the social fabric of our communities here in London. To find our next generation artists, I've teamed up with Simon, who runs Sound School, a full-time non-profit music college and outreach programme founded in 2008. Our kind of strap line is changing young people's lives through music and mm. I feel that we absolutely do that. We have a huge alumni network of young people that have, you know, studied with us, gone on to university or maybe have got signed or gone into work and they keep coming back and we are one big family. I want to put together a little group of performers so we can have a bit of a showcase. Sure. Have you got anybody that's on your radar you think could be part of that? Oh, yes. So I've always got a few on my yes. radar. Following Simon's tip, I'm meeting up with Luena to find out her reasons for getting into the music business. 
and whether she can take part in our upcoming performance. Well, I started singing in church. That's mm -hmm. how I started. And I've just kind of kept on doing it. There was no option to study music at Luena's school, but it was music that got her through tough times. I really feel that music benefits your mental health mm -hmm. because that's how I was able to deal with stuff in my life. It was to go to music and write and kind of let my feelings out there. So I love you to be part of this little event that we're putting on. It's a bit of a sort of showcase. Mm. And we have somebody called Jodie Abacus. I can just see a collaboration coming mm -hmm. on. So would you like to meet him? Yes, I would. Yes. Come on. Then. Having agreed to be a mentor, I've asked Jodie to meet Luena at the WAC Art Centre in Camden, where I'm hoping he can offer some advice to prepare her for the performance. I don't really play like in front of crowds, and I've never like had the confidence to do that either. Would that be the type of thing that you would like to grow in? Definitely, I'd love to actually play in front of people. Understanding that Luena is nervous about playing the piano in front of an audience, Jody gives Luena some words of advice. Can you play with your eyes closed? No. <laughs> That's a good way to kind of um, shut yourself into the song. There's one thing about performances that people want to connect with you, but it's all about sometimes just lassoing those experiences and putting them on a leash and controlling them. Luena has some useful tips to go away and practice to get ready for her big performance coming up in a week's time. I'm telling you all that I've learned So let me tell you oh, oh, oh. Sometimes it's hard to let go I'm gonna bring you to go After some initial nervousness, Luen is on the path to the big performance and we'll catch up with her a little later on. I've come to North London to meet another potential artist for our big performance. Meet Gabriella, another alumni student of Sound School. I was like really young when I used to like just sing along with my mum to like, I don't know, ABBA, Stevie Wonder, uh -huh. Diva Cassidy, things like that. I live in a like shared accommodation, mm -hmm. so there's like other young people living with me. My mum was like, "Oh, we're moving back to Scotland." Um, and how old were you then? Sixteen. That's really young. Yeah. I know, but that's when I feel like I realised that I actually wanted to do music. Do you enjoy performing? Um, I do, but only once I get past the like anxiety. To find a mentor for Gabriella, I want to look for someone who could combine the structure of traditional piano teaching with a more open, expressive style. I've come to Hoxton to meet Liz to see if she's the right fit for the expert we're looking for. Hey. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Anthea. First, we talk to Liz about the effect learning to play an instrument has on children and the decline of music lessons in schools. So schools are not incentivising children to learn music. GCSC music has dropped by 25% over 10 years. 40% of lower income families say they just cannot stretch the budget to instrumental lessons. Mm -hmm. And that means that it's becoming the province of the financially privileged mm -hmm. and that just doesn't feel right to me. So how can that be fixed? Well, it has to come through the schools and therefore we need to make sure that the schools have the resources and understand the value and the importance of music education. There's so much that you do when you play a musical instrument. It helps them with co their cognitive skills, that mm -hmm. problem solving, build self-esteem, autonomy. And actually, although they don't realise it, they're also learning about self-reflection, you know, and critical mm. evaluation of what they're doing. So do you think there's any way to inspire children to play and pick up a musical instrument? I think we have to reach out and teach them what they want to learn about. And actually, I can teach children piano technique using Adele just as well as Mozart. Mm -hmm. Now I have a little project for you. We have a, a showcase that we're putting together and I have got this young lady called Gabriella and I'd like you to meet her. I'd love to, lead on. I've invited Gabriella to Premises Studios for her session with Liz. I'm hoping Liz will be able to give Gabriella a nudge in the right direction to express her talent even more. Can we look at that lovely moon?
movement you've got you've got your you've got a I wonder if you could do it using using the fingers available So you get that much clearer, clearer sound coming through. It's really great to see people inspired by others to just go for it and do what they love. But breaking into the industry takes more than just talent alone. It takes dedication. So let's hope our young artists can focus towards giving a great performance. Coming up, we speak to a music therapist about how vital music can be to our mental well-being. Being able to go and make music helps to re-establish those, those connections. We see how Luena and Gabriella have been getting on before both of them test their skills and passion against the judgment of our industry experts. What's happening? I'm just there. Uh, We know music brings us joy and happiness when we're listening to it or playing it. But how does it directly affect our mental health? To get the answers to this, we've come to Nordoff Robbins, a charity that works to enrich people's lives with music therapy. We are speaking to Kerry, a music therapist here at Nordoff Robbins. In terms of the work that we do as music therapists, it's that really active work of people being together and being able to create connections through music making either in a group or in one-to-one -one sessions. Being able to go and make music helps to re-establish those, those connections which are so kind of fundamental to our lives but they can get lost because of the experiences that people are going through. I've had a chance to meet one of Kerry's old patients, Elizabeth, who now teaches and mentors others. Well, at school it was horrible, really. I hated it. <laughs> Just like, like bullied a lot, um, physically, mentally, emotionally. The only thing that helped me was music. Yeah. The jumble that you have in your head, oh, yeah. the various different things you have to deal with, you plainly don't when you pick up a guitar. I feel like it's my security when I when I when I have something in my, uh, music yeah. in my hand. I feel like I can put my message across better than I can just talking to people, yeah. really. Would you say it's been your saviour? It has, yeah, it really has. It's been, it's always been there as my anchor. We're revisiting the Casio demo area in Denmark Street to make sure our musicians get the very best equipment for their musical performances. Yeah, yeah I really like this red one. It's, it's just really nice. Feel free to try something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds nice, doesn't it? I think we should take this one. It feels like I'm playing a real piano. Yeah. This the one? Mm, I think so, yeah. Casio has been a pioneer in allowing us to create music in our homes for decades. Who didn't own one of these at some point in their lives? Part of this program's journey, we had a chance to speak to one of the company's senior figures in Japan, Mr. Hitoshi Ando, to see what inspires the team that have brought music making to millions of people across the world. Casio 
It's the day of our showcase performance and we've brought Luena and Gabriella to Air Studios in Hampstead, London. Founded by the Beatles producer Sir George Martin in 1969, it's a unique piece of London's music heritage. I'm really excited to see what Luena and Gabriella have prepared for us today. They're both incredibly talented, but will their nerves get the better of them? Or will they pull a performance out of the bag? Luena and Gabriella get the opportunity to sit down with their mentors just one final time before taking to the stage. It's more really about the feeling and the emotion in the song. Mm. The main thing is that you keep it real simple. Mm -hmm. You'll find the confidence in that. If it's three notes, four notes, whatever, just make sure you keep it simple. Luena has what it takes to make it in the industry. She's a super talent. I think there's a lot to be discovered, which is the exciting thing. It's going to be a little bit nerve-wracking for her, but I think she'll be fine. So what led you to decide to change your piece? Whilst I was practising, I actually just came up with it. So Gabriella's really put in the work and you can see how her piano technique has improved. I have to say it makes me a little uncomfortable that the piece is still not quite finished with, what, less than an hour till the performance? After some last minute rehearsals and sound checks, Gabriella and Luena are beginning to feel the nerves kick in as our audience start to arrive. Really nervous. Very nervous. One of the guests attending the performance is record producer Peter Lyons. I think coming to a place like Air Studios is quite amazing for young musical talent. I came to places like this in my early 20s and just found it incredibly inspiring. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how it affects them as well. So we're just a short time away from getting Luena and Gabriella up onto stage for their showcase performance, where not only will they be surrounded by their friends and family watching, but also record producers and other industry professionals who no doubt will be offering valuable advice. Stage, Luena is getting nervous and needs some moral support. What's happening? I'm just there, uh, I'm very nervous. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like. Okay. When she, once you go in there and you sit down, don't worry about the crowd, everyone wants you to do well. Yeah. yeah. Good. Come. Cool. So I would like you guys to welcome Luena. I 
No, I'm not perfect. Was I enough? I came on too strong. My heart, you can't touch. If you loved me, you'd understand. Say something. The words I want you to say, like it's a big mistake. We're going back to where we used to be. It was amazing. I think uh, Luana did very, very well. Um, she managed to hold her nerves together and play with uh, you know, the confidence that she needs to move on. So I think it was great. Well done, you were Thank amazing. You. Thanks. To have done that off a week's composing, rehearsing, and then to perform, it's amazing. Thank you me. should be so proud. I'm so impressed at how she managed to sort of deliver that, that. Some of that I had never heard before, and it just, flowed um, confidently, I thought. With the kind of passion and I think drive and motivation that we've seen from both Gabrielle and Luena today, I think if they carry on along that path, kind of exhibiting that, I think there's an amazing chance that they can achieve whatever they want to achieve. I feel like I've gained confidence with playing in front of people. Um, so I definitely want to take that into my career and actually like maybe one day perform at a live show with the piano. Yeah, I'm really happy with this experience. I just feel like there's a few skills that I'm going to like just carry on like working on. Well done. Me too. Shall we go? Let's, yeah. go? Let's go. Luena and Gabriella have given the perfect show of their talent to our audience and it's clear that both of them and Elizabeth all have perfect futures ahead. So long as community movements continue to persevere despite severe <laughs> underfunding. I've enjoyed working with these talented artists, mainly because they're using their passion to help others. And if we can spread the musical love, then it really is going to be a bright musical future.